Section 22 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Arden. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M. D. Eder. Chapter 3. The Associations of Imbeciles and Idiots. Part 2. 4. Results of the Experiment. I have arranged my subjects clinically, according to their degree of feeble-mindedness. First come the idiots, then the imbeciles. About thirty tests have been chosen from each case. Those which I regard as peculiarly characteristic and best adapted to demonstrate briefly the course of the experiment. Number 1. Total Reactions, 72. 1. Sunday. Consists of a day on which one does nothing. 2. Winter. Consists of snow. 3. Lake. Consists of water. 4. Schoolboy. When he goes to school. 5. Father. Companion together with mother. 6. Table. Consists of wood. 7. Ink. Something to write. 8. Bread. To eat. 9. Tree. A part of. There are trees in the garden. 10. Mountain. A high mountain. 11. Hair. Part of the head. 12. Copybook. Consists of paper. 13. Paper. You write upon it. 14. School. Consists of schoolboys. 15. Sing. Consists of notes and songbooks. 16. Ring. On the finger. 17. Window. Consists of wood and window panes. 18. Flower. A pot plant. 19. Cherry. A thing in the garden. On the trees. 20. Piano where there is music upstairs. 21. Oven. Good for warmth. 22. Walk. That is when you stretch your legs for a pint on Sundays. 23. Cat. Four-legged animal. 24. Bird. Also of the animal kingdom. 25. Swim. In the lake. In water. 26. White. The wine. 27. Game. There are lots of games. 28. Stroke. You can stroke men and animals. 29. Sweet. Something sugary. 30. Friendly. When you are not angry. 31. Crown. A kind of head covering. 32. Ill. When you are not well. 33. Star. Part of the sky. These tests give a clear view of this patient's way of reacting, as is at once evident. The tendency here is to explain or to define the stimulus word in some way. The subject seeks to explain the stimulus words by stating of what the thing denoted by the stimulus word consists. He denotes the material. Reactions 3, 6, 12, 14, 17. The way in which this tendency runs off at a tangent in reaction 2 is characteristic of idiots. Winter consists of snow. The defective verbal education is here typical as manifested in the quite inappropriate use of the phrase consists of. This is a well-known phrase in school use, one but seldom used in later life, especially by an idiot. He is only half familiar with the limitations of its use, and employs it where it does not really apply well. It is thoroughly typical of the idiot that the winter consists of snow. He observes only the external phenomena, things that occur together or that follow one another without making any kind of deductions as to the causal connection. I have no doubt that to these patients, also the cold and the short days are typical of the presentation winter. But from their reactions, it is very obvious that what is simply visual and external has greater importance than the less striking, but causally more important collateral phenomena of the cold and short days. The most illuminating example of the idiot's purely visual an external apprehension of things comes to light in the reaction, sing, consists of notes and songbooks. Here it is distinctly seen how the external manifestation of the act, something really quite secondary, overcomes what is essential. Reactions of this kind are characteristic and suffice for the diagnosis of imbecility or idiocy, as against the so-called secondary states of feeble-mindedness. In order to convince himself that he understands the meaning of the stimulus word, our patient tries to characterize the object it denotes by naming the place where the thing occurs or is found. Compare reactions 9, 16, 20, 25. Or he names the purpose of the thing, 7, 8, 
21 in its use, or the action which it executes, 4, 13, 28. Sometimes he designates the object by another expression, synonymous as a rule, which he perhaps accentuates by giving it some particularly typical attribute, mountain, a high mountain, flower, a pot plant, where he tries a tautological elucidation by bringing the opposite with its negative into the reaction, e.g. dark, not bright. Compare also reactions 30, 32. Universal concepts taken too widely, which are superordinated to the stimulus word, form a characteristic group. These superordinations are much too extensive to be able to fulfill their object of being explanatory. Occasionally, the universal concept is so remote and indefinite that it really contains practically nothing relating to the stimulus word, e.g. tree, apart. The disparity is here so great that the patient himself feels this gap, and therefore adds, the garden has trees, compare 23 and 24. As this example shows, the patient tends to eliminate or limit the extension, and therefore the inappropriateness of his supraordinated general concept by particularizing his concept in the actual object. This, again, he does in a way typical of feeble-mindedness. He particularizes his general concept by affixing some definite place to it. This, by its naive simplicity, often puts it in strange contrast with the unlimited universality of the concept, particularized universal concept. Almost classical are sky, part of heaven, father, a companion together with mother, cherry, a thing in the garden, compare also 1131. The favorite kind of explanation by means of an example is also used by our patient. Reactions of this kind are generally recognized by the form of sentence, is, if you. The example can be universal, 26, 28, 30, 32, or particular, when the subject, as a rule, takes an active part himself. In this connection, a typical reaction is walk, that is when you stretch your legs for a pint on Sunday. The patient here uses the reminiscences of his Sunday excursions at the asylum. Here the great preponderance of the outer phenomenon over the meaning is very evident. Looking at these reactions from the standpoint of Wundt's classification, we find here, as contrasted with normal persons, a marked preponderance of inner associations, if the use of this concept may be allowed at all in imbeciles. The number of inner associations far exceeds the average figures as given by Jung and Reeklin for the uneducated, who were, however, not of the lowest grade of education. The use here of the concept inner association is decidedly open to question. A calculation has shown that there are among the reactions 77% of definitions which are decidedly not the reproduction of the first impression, but rather the products of a lengthy process of reflection. That is, they are quite complicated mental structures. According to Jung's experiences with nearly 20,000 associations in the uneducated, the intermixture of conscious reflection and the reaction begins high up in the region of the normal. The direct manner of reacting found among the educated, where practically the reaction word is automatically linked on to the stimulus word, is frequently neglected by the uneducated, even of a relatively high grade. Conscious reflection as to the significance of the stimulus word, with consequent tendency to explanation and to the formation of sentences, takes the place of the direct reaction. There is almost habitually a suppression of the first words that do actually occur. As Jung and Reekland point out, the stimulus word takes on more and more the character of a question the further we proceed from intelligence and education. The inner associations of the uneducated are therefore not merely sudden ideas resting upon important relationships, but frequently a construction consciously sought out. This is pronouncedly the way in which imbeciles react. There is never a sharp demarcation from the normal. They are only separated by certain differences in degree. I have, therefore, no reason not to use the term inner association, although there is really an essential difference between the imbecile definition and the inner association of the educated. I therefore use the word association rather in the sense of an intellectual reaction. As the form of the reaction, especially the small number of outer associations, shows, the feeble-minded react with a great expenditure of attention. The association experiment means an important mental exercise to the imbecile, 
It seems strange that the subject should give himself such trouble instead of expressing himself as most educated persons do by simply giving one word for every stimulus word. It cannot be maintained that the feeble-minded who are able to define as our patient can do not command a certain number of simple verbal connections to the stimulus word taken from everyday language. Why do they not express themselves by these connections which are certainly present in the reaction? The stimulus word, as Jung and Ricklin show, is taken even by the uneducated normal as meaning something, by the side of which the merely verbal links fall into the background. The uneducated is not accustomed to deal with single words, but only knows them in connections as symbols with a meaning. Under the influence of this habit constellation, he is chiefly concerned with the meaning of the stimulus word. All the reasons which hold good for this peculiar adjustment of the uneducated hold good also for the feeble-minded. His attention is fixed almost exclusively upon the meaning of the word, and, despite example and repeated admonition, can only by dint of great exertion, if at all, take up another mode of reaction. If we give any imbeciles time enough and warn them constantly only to react with one single word appropriate to the stimulus word, most of them will be able, by training, to produce a result which looks like the associations of a normal person. On the other hand, if we give the imbecile a free hand, only making clear at the beginning, by means of examples, that he has to say the first thing that occurs to him, he will force himself in the first reactions, as was frequently the case with my subject, into the mode recommended. But he soon slips back into reacting by way of explanation, which suits him better. Footnote 1. There are, however, exceptions which we shall mention later. End footnote 1. If the subject is constantly warned and requested to give a reaction in one single appropriate word, the experiment loses that freedom of its conditions, by which what is specific can be brought out. A series of limited associations arise in which whatever is typical of the case cannot be recognized at all, or at best with extreme difficulty. Our experiment is not designed to test the working capacity of the subject in any definite direction, but to create a method by which what is valuable for diagnosis may be brought out quickly and with certainty. Number 2. An idiot, 38 years old. Total reactions, 66. 1. Sunday, that is today. 2. Winter, that will come again. 3. Head, points to his head, forehead. 4. Ink ink bottle. 5. Bread. Where we eat, i.e. what we eat. 6. Tree. A big and long shows its size with its hands. 7. Mountain. That is far away. 8. Salt. We want that for food. 9. Copybook. Where we write. 10. Book. A little book. 11. Lead pencil. Of lead. 12. Sing. They sing upstairs. 13. Ring. A large one. Describes a circle in the air. 14. Frog. What hops about on the ground. 15. Flower. Bunch. 16. Cherry. Where we eat. 17. Asylum. That is one. 18. Attendant. Sick attendant. 19. Oven. Cylinder oven. 20. Walk. We are doing that now with Andrew. 21. Cook. The women do. 22. Dance. The others do that. 23. Cat. A kitten. 24. Dark. It is now. It is rather dark in the room. 25. Heart. There. Points towards his heart. 26. Bird. A vulture. 27. Moon. Above in the sky. 28. Sleep. We do that at night. 29. Dark red. Quiet red. 30. Sweet. Quite sweet. 31. Friendly. When we shake hands. 32. Smell. We should stop smelling. 33. Prison. That is a kind of little window. Describes a small square in the air. This test exhibits essentially the same thing as the previous case, a pronounced tendency to explanation. But the manner of explanation is in some degree different from the previous case. The designations of time and purpose are common to both 5, 7, 8, 9, 16, as are also the accounts of the material, 11, or the accounts of the action which the thing executes, or of the thing which executes a definite activity, 2, 12, 
14, 20, 21, 22, 28. The tautologies, which are partly specified by a slight external change, are relatively numerous. The particularization often takes place, as in the previous case, by the addition of an attribute characteristic of the object, or one which denotes it more concretely. Among the reactions which especially exhibit this are tree, a big and long ring, a large one. These attributes serve to elucidate the object better and to show at the same time that the subject has fully understood the stimulus word. The same explanation holds good of those reactions where the stimulus word is simply translated into its diminutive form, 10, 23. It must be remembered that the subject only reacts in dialect. In dialect, the diminutive form has a more familiar air, hence its use by the patient. He wants to show that he is at home with the idea of the stimulus word, and that the thing is usually thus described. If the reaction were completed to a sentence, as it probably is at first in thought, the reaction runs, cat, that is a kitten, book, that is a little book. The reaction, quite sweet, must be taken in a similar way. The tendency to explanation is clear here, but it is characteristic of this case that most of the associations are very brief and arid. The above-mentioned associations especially show the absence of further associations. To a certain extent, the subject contents himself with apprehending the sense of the stimulus word, and because he does not exactly know what to do with it, he confirms the stimulus word by a similar expression. The great poverty in associations seems also to favor a mode of reaction which could not be proved in the previous case, i.e. the mere reference to the surroundings. Asylum, that is one. Dark, it is now. These explanations again show clearly the poverty in associations. The subject does not go beyond the stimulus word at all, and contents himself by showing that he has understood it. Reaction 33 illustrates beautifully the imbecile manner of apprehension. To the patient, the small square window panes are the most important part of the presentation prison, because that is just the recognizable mark of it when seen from without. There is in these reactions, as a whole, a cleaving to the concrete, to sensual perceptions. There is not much beyond that. In contrast to the previous case, we find no universal concepts here. The reaction is never far removed from the stimulus word, and the explanations are distinguished by a quite special absence of any influx of associations. This absence, visible in the quality of the associations, was also shown in another way, by real faults, that is, experiments in which no reaction at all occurred. Although, as was proved by questioning him, the meaning of the stimulus word was understood. In my opinion, a good deal of the striking poverty in associations is to be ascribed to this inhibition. As was stated in the introductory remarks, a state of emotional stupidity occurs relatively frequently among imbeciles, especially in the form of an examination paralysis during association experiments. As Jung has shown, footnote 1, Jung, Uba simulation von Geistestorung, Loco Citato, page 181, and footnote 1. Stupidity is chiefly characterized by an inhibition of associative activity, the stimulus words arousing no associative processes. The subject reacts with very long times naming surrounding objects, which, however, are in no way connected with the stimulus word. The subject thus makes up for his lack of associations. If the inhibition, or rather prohibition, is stronger, perhaps he does not react at all. Faults then arise. There is every appearance of a disturbance of this kind being present here, but a degree slighter than in Jung's case. The relatively numerous faults and the striking insufficiency of the definitions point to this. The timing of the reactions would naturally be a valuable means for the accurate recording of the momentary psychical condition. Unfortunately, my experiments were carried out at a time when our knowledge of the processes of association was very incomplete and when the great importance of the reaction time was still unknown to us. It is of practical importance to pay attention to anomalies of the emotions conditioned by momentary constellations. Stupidity can temporarily increase so much in a feeble-minded person as to lead one to think that it is a case of severe dementia. In forensic cases, this phenomenon requires serious consideration. Number 3. Idiot. 65 years old. There are no pronounced signs of dementia senilis. Patient has trouble 
and understanding the experiment, and throughout has very long reaction times. Total reactions, 58. 1. Schoolboy. Schoolboy repeating. 2. Father. Once threw me downstairs. 3. Head. White. 4. Ink. Black. 5. Needle. Where we sew with it. 6. Bread. White. 7. Tree. Trees grow with quinces on them. 8. Mountain. There is a tree where quinces grow on it. 9. Hair. White. 10. Salt. White. 11. Wood. Black. 12. Copybook. White. 13. Paper. White. 14. Book. Has leaves. 15. Lead pencil. Has pictures on. Pointed. 16. Ring. White. 17. Tooth. Wisdom tooth. 18. Window. Of glass. 19. Frog. Black. 20. Asylum. There where people are in. 21. Cherry. Black. 22. Piano. People can play on it. 23. To cook. To cook potatoes. 24. Water. Cold. 25. To dance. On the floor. 26. Cat. They are white. 27. Resin. Black. 28. Bird. White. 29. Swim. I can also. 30. Ride. On a horse. 31. Sweet. That is white. That is sugar. In this case, we again find those traits of feeble-mindedness, which we have repeatedly emphasized. Statements of place, purpose, chief action, or chief quality, etc. 5, 14, 15, 18, 20, 22, 25, 30. We find side by side with this the tendency to elucidation, to concrete understanding. 1, 17, 23, 24. With this tendency, there is connected also certain egocentric reactions in which distinct subjective reminiscences come to light, as in the characteristic reaction, Father, once threw me downstairs. Compare also 29. A peculiarity of this case is the frequent repetition of the predicates white and black, which occur also in places where they are quite meaningless. White forces itself to the front, where it is only indirectly conditioned, as in 31. White perseverates also several times. Phenomena of this kind are occasionally found in marked stupidity, as, e.g., in the case mentioned before. In reaction 8, the subject does not hear the stimulus word, and in 15 only reacts to the stimulus word subsequently. These phenomena require the same explanation as the abnormal perseverations of the previous case. Meaningless reactions likewise occur abundantly in emotional stupidity whenever this reaches a high degree, as Jung's case shows. Some of the perseverations are certainly so marked that the suspicion of their being due to early cerebral atrophy cannot be put aside, as no definite observations of the effect of senile cerebral changes upon the mechanism of association have yet been made. I cannot decide how far the perseveration is conditioned entirely by emotional stupidity. Number 4. Idiot of a mild degree, 38 years old, total reactions, 145. 1. Christmas, that is Christ's birthday. 2. Sunday, for walks. 3. Winter, when it's cold. 4. Father, when he has a son of his own. 5. Bread, for eating. 6. Lamp, to make it light. 7. Tree, where there are shadows. 8. Mountain, when we go a journey. 9. Hair, when we cut it. 10. Sing, a song. 11. Ring, when you are engaged. 12. Cat, a beast of prey. 13. Tooth, for eating. 14. Oven, for heating. 15. Dark, when it is night. 16. Dance, at holidays when music is heard. 17. Heart, the heart of a man. 18. Bird, a beast of prey. 19. Swim, when we bathe in the Rhine. 20. Hit, when we clout someone. 21. Friendly, when we're jolly. 22. Caress, flatter. 23. Grand, when they are proud. 24. Wedding, that is, when people marry. 25. Sour, 
when it is sour. 26. Eel, a fish. 27. I, when we see. 28. Faithful, when nothing is taken, i.e. stolen. 29. Blood, that is from oxen. 30. Barn, at school. 31. Family, when there are many children. We see again in this case a pronounced tendency to definition. It looks as if the subject had been told to say what he understood by the stimulus word. The task is carried out in the usual way. We have again accounts of time, place, purpose, and tautological elucidations, 10, 17, in the forefront. There are, besides, a few explanations by example of a more universal character, 4, 11, 15, 21, 23, 24, that are frequently but slightly separated from tautological elucidation, or from a more particular character, 8, 9, 19, 28, 31. Instances of the latter are the reactions, mountain, when we go a journey, and family, when there are many children. These are very characteristic of the psychology of feeble-mindedness, which adheres to concrete externality. The patient uses now and again the form of superordination of a universal concept as a means of explanation, 12, 16, 18. In 18, the general concept is not quite appropriate, but it is constellated by the previous reaction, 12, cat, beast of prey, bird, beast of prey. Feeble-minded persons, especially those who are somewhat inhibited by emotion, willingly lend themselves to constellations from previous stimulus or reaction words. In consequence of the blank association to the reaction, they make use of the same words even when they are not quite appropriate to the stimulus word. I am inclined to regard such superordinates as cat, beast of prey, eel, fish, as signs of a rather higher grade of the feeble-minded. These are universal concepts of a kind absent in a severe idiot unless they have to some extent been drilled into him in some educational asylum. General concepts, in the ordinary sense, are entirely absent. He has only certain words which designate something general and indefinite to him as fat, part, thing, means, tools, then animal, plant, food, etc. He brings his concrete instances under these universal concepts, which he uses quite widely and indiscriminately, even promiscuously. If he wants to do more, he particularizes, as we have seen, by simply appending the designation of a place or the like to his universal concept. All variants in concept between the concrete and universal superconcept are either unknown to him or are unfamiliar. The occurrence of appropriate and proximate superordinations like dog, a mammal, tree, wood, lamp, means of lighting, speaks, on the whole, against the presence of severe congenital feeble-mindedness. Therefore, in this milder form of idiocy, the occurrence of a few appropriate superordinates cannot be entirely accidental. End of section 